This here is my buddy David's truck. We're in Mesa, Arizona, and I'll show you what it's doing. If I can figure out how to use one of these fancy four keys, a salt key, what about that? We've checked all the fluids, we checked all the oils, there's no check engine lights on, any of that stuff. Fired up, she runs smooth. And pop the hood. But it has a light tapping noise in it. I wanted you guys to hear the tapping noise, but I honestly didn't realize how horrible the audio was in that clip. It did have, like I say, a light tapping noise, but the motor ran smooth. The no check engine lights, any of that stuff. But when I come around here and pull the oil cap off, one thing that really bothered me is it did have a pulsating uh, blow-by coming to it. And usually when I've seen that, it's been a lot worse and it would be losing compression into the oil pan crack piston, broke ring, something of that nature. But you can feel that definitive tap on the bottom of your hand when you put your hand over the over the oil cap, where the oil cap goes. I also wanted to make a clip of this where I pulled the coolant cap off to make sure and show that there's no pressure coming from the coolant tank, insinuating a blown hand gasket or anything like that. It's just the blow by from the oil cap and that tick. It's just, didn't want to drive it all the way back to Ohio like that. Well, we are here at the Country Inn and Suites in Mesa, Arizona. And we went to the nearest camping world and picked up a Roadmaster Blackhawk 2 all-terrain tow bar. And we also bought these adapters. And what these adapters are going to allow us to do is take his D-rings off of his aftermarket bumper and they'll go right on the, the steel brackets for the D-rings. show you a little bit better how we did this on the back for tail lights. We went to Harbor Freight, bought two, uh, two trailer lights or a trailer light kit that came with the wiring, ran the wires back here, and then we had bought some cable ties and uh, just ran them around this and got them good and solid. With Ford having an aluminum body, we had a hard time finding the ground. But these wires just slid right up between that and the lights have been working. It's a good tight fit. They've not tried to come out either side, not once. So we did that. We ran the wires up through the bed. He's got a sliding back glass. You can see the wires right there coming up through the back glass and coming across here and over here. And he had a six foot extension, which we needed. So I took the end off of it and wired the extension on the seven way to those four wires going up there. And then the wire that's running the tail lights, the reason the tail lights stay lit up all the time, I didn't hook it to the tail light wire on my truck. I actually hooked it to the auxiliary wire so the lights will stay on all the time. Plus I also ran that to the positive on his battery so he could leave his ignition on. He has a freezer and refrigerator and all that stuff in the truck. We didn't want the battery going dead and all of your stuff going bad. So my truck's also charging his battery while we went on the road. And that's the same positive signal that I'm using to keep the tail lights burning all the time. So, yeah. All in, it's going pretty good. This truck, we did call the dealer and asked them about flat towing. Because we couldn't really find a lot of buy it online. It's a 17 Ford F-350. And, uh... We figured out how to do it. The dealer says that you're not supposed to do it and uh, it's not capable and all that, but. Okay, putting the 2017 Ford into flat tow mode. First thing we're gonna do is down here, we're gonna push the emergency brake. It don't, don't have to push it all the way down, just enough to get the light to come on. Then we're gonna turn the ignition on just to the forward position. And I'm gonna zoom this in just a little bit. Now that we've got the ignition on, we're gonna press the brake, pull the truck into neutral. Then we're gonna come over here to the four-wheel drive. Five times in 10 seconds, we're gonna cycle from two high to four low. So one, two, three, four, five. Go back to two high, 
neutral tow enabled leave transmission in neutral so transmissions in neutral one thing you definitely want to make sure you do is take that parking brake back off and now you're ready to be flat towed according to what i've read up on and everything like i say we called the dealership the dealership ship said um even though flat tow mode enabled they said this truck was not flat towable so we did go ahead and pull the drive shafts out because it's kind of an emergency that it has to be towed now you can go ahead and cut the key back the key will not cut off or come off it'll turn your displays and stuff off to keep help keep from running the batteries down but over uh about a seven hour drive um it did run the batteries dead so i actually he's got refrigerator and stuff like that in here so i actually ran a wire off of my seven way to his battery to keep his battery charged up going on the road we've been about 2,000 miles so far everything's working good hope this helps you out like i said that is how to put it in tow mode but check with someone make sure you're not going to hurt your truck before you try to tow it like this so i uh, just got the drive shaft out of it we're going to tie it up but we decided to pull the whole thing out and unfortunately if you're taking the drive shaft out what i was telling him and i didn't have a good way to do it on the other side i took a wire brush and just brushed this off all the way across the u-joint and down the drive shaft so whoever puts it back together can maybe see i need a paint marker you, you always want to paint this mark the yoke mark the cap and mark the uh drive shaft on both sides it's good, just good practice. I know there's somebody sitting out there going, you don't know how to time a drive shaft, but this helps a lot. You know, mark it on this side of the shaft, this side of the joint, that side of the yoke. One thing that really aggravated me is my buddy had just took the truck to his local Ford dealership to have a rear main seal and oil pan gasket put on. And when I went to pull the drive shaft, this is how I found it. They did have to pull the transmission to replace the rear main seal and oil pan gasket. They didn't tighten the bolts back up. Mr. David was about to have a bad day either way. I mean, I'm really curious. They're telling him now, this is a couple of weeks later, they're telling him he's going to have to have a new engine at that same dealer. Was that the same technician that installed the drive shaft that did the work on the engine? We made it here to the Flying J in Sayre, Oklahoma. Had it back, and uh, everything's been going really good. Now that we've probably done about 1,000, 1,200 miles on the hitch, um, some things that I've noticed... I don't really have any things that I don't like. Uh, it does have where you can flip it up for tow mode and then fold the arms over. Um, on these, I would like to see it came for the with the boots that cover this up like shock absorbers, but it, it didn't for the price. I thought it definitely should have came with that and someone to install it and all that. But, you know, we bought it at Camping World, so we gave top dollar for it. But um, I thought it was a nice touch that it had the tracks here. So if you have the straight cables, you can bring them up right through the tracks. We were looking around and found out that's what that was for. And you can also use it to like zip tie your wiring and stuff. Now this is a self-centering tow bar. So once you get going down the road, it centers itself up, centers the vehicle up. But to get the arms to where you can move them around for hooking up, you just lift this lever and it disengages. And now you can take and move that shaft in and out. But once you let that back into the position and it is spring loaded, it self-centers the truck back up and if you have to hit the brakes it takes the cushion so far pulling uh pulling this truck with this truck that thing is doing an excellent job i mean I, like i said i never flat home one before but it, it rides good it's driving good it's pulling good I, I don't have anything bad to say about it it's actually a lot better than what i thought it was going to be so I don't have I don't have a lot of a lot to compare it to, but so far my experience with this one has been pretty excellent. I mean I, I think it does an excellent job.
We left the Sager, Oklahoma yesterday morning and made it to Cuba last night, got something to eat, and went on over to Effingham. And just figured I'd tell y'all some things I noticed about the the uh, tow bar. The first thing I noticed I, when I got to Effingham last night, I turned the wheel and got it into a pretty sharp turn. And I was thinking that those arms would expand and collapse to uh, allow for the turn, but it turns out they don't. I measured it and it was 10 and a half inches on the arm on each side. And then I turned as sharp as I could and it was still 10 and a half inches. It just pivots on that center pin. So that was something I didn't know. Um, we don't have the hitch exactly level. It's supposed to be within three inches, you know. It doesn't need to be higher or lower than three inches or it'll give you a chuck and fill, is what they said, or what the paperwork said. And we're feeling that chucking a little bit when we get on hard, hard rough roads like this because the bar is facing down. So when we hit one of those bumps, my truck will bounce differently than his truck bounces and it causes that bar to actually get just a little bit longer and shorter when it flattens out. So it is chucking just a little bit. I think it'd be a whole lot better if we had it level. Um, other than that though, it's done an absolutely great job. Um, everything's just been going right on down the road. When we first started out, I was pretty nervous about it. Um, with his truck weighing more than mine. And we transferred the fuel from his truck over to my truck and that made a difference. But when we first left, we got on two lane coming up toward Holbrook and uh, I was going slower. It was, you know, trying to get dark and first time we'd ever done this. And you could actually feel the, uh, golly, you could actually feel the, um, the truck pushing in the curves and stuff on that two lane running about 45 55 miles an hour but i tell you once you get up to speed around 65 mile an hour it's so much better it's like the truck just reacts to my truck a whole lot better you don't feel you don't feel that near as bad you do feel it feel it sometimes but you don't feel it near as bad when we first left out, I was kind of nervous getting over 45, 50 miles an hour, especially because we were on two lanes. We had oncoming traffic in the next lane over and all that. So yeah, it kind of made for a nervous situation. But after we got out on the interstate, we've been running 70 the rest of the way across. And it, like I say, anything over 65, it just is a very noticeable difference. It's doing better. Now, as far as fuel mileage goes, I could show it, show it but I can't show it right now. Um, We've been running 68 and 70 most of the day today since we left Effingham and we're about to cross into Ohio on I-70. And right now I'm showing 15.6 miles a gallon. Well, the first day when we left Milan, New Mexico, we run 68 to 70 all day long and it stayed over 15 miles a gallon, but right around 15, 3, 15, 5. And that's what the truck's showing. I haven't done pencil to paper. Yesterday, however, it was just we had really good traffic, really good everything coming across Oklahoma and up 44 and all that. The speed limits were way on up. The truck was responding good. So the majority of the day we ran 72, 73. And I was noticing around 13, we were also in high wind. And I saw it get anywhere from 12 and a half, 13 and a half miles a gallon, right around that area. But, uh, I know a lot of people that's in RV transport talk about getting tow bars and using the tow bar to transfer, you know, to like husbands and wives a lot. Talk about going out with uh, with uh, two trucks, delivering two loads, and then tying one truck to the other and driving them back. I can see where it would be beneficial, especially if both the trucks were the same size. If you're using the one ton to pull the three quarter ton back, that way you got more weight up front. You know, you want to tow ideally with a heavier vehicle. but. Like I said, would I, would I do this again? Absolutely, I felt the first little while, it, I mean, it was okay. I knew it was gonna be okay. It just kind of nerve wracking getting used to how the tra truck handled towing another truck, flat towing. But another problem we ran an issue we ran into, and if any of you guys have done this before, let me know in the comments or let everybody else know in the comments because I Googled it to death and I couldn't find anything. Flat towing that truck, we called the dealership, gave them the VIN number. They said that truck is not flat towable. 
you can't tow it like we're doing because of well they didn't really say nobody can give me an answer as to why not now first my first thought was the electronic tra transfer case may not have neutral in it so I did find a video they showed how to put the transfer case into neutral I'll try to show that towards somewhere in this video and when you do it well you set the parking brake press the brake turn the ignition on pull the truck into neutral and then cycle the truck from four from too high to four low five times in a row just one two three four five and then it comes up on the screen and says tow mode enabled why would the truck tell you it was in tow mode if you can't tow it so to be on the safe side we went ahead and pulled the drive shaft the rear drive shaft now a friend of mine asked me last night why didn't i pull the front drive shaft <clears throat> the truck does have auto locking hubs in it where you can go to auto or you can go to full lock and they're on auto but i reached up underneath the truck with the truck sitting still spun the drive shaft i saw the axle spin but that told me the hubs were unlocked on the front and then i was worried that the auto locking hubs may try to lock in and lock out going down the road we when we got where we was going last night we started the truck up put it into gear and the whole drive line spun the front drive shaft spun everything spun but the auto locking hubs didn't lock in because i was thinking he, he would still be able to put it in full wheel drive and move it around when we got it home in full wheel drive using the front axle to pull it around i'm thinking if we swap those hubs to locked that it will it'll move under its own power but it also makes me think there may be an issue with those auto locking hubs because i feel like it should have pulled so it is another day and we got david home about 10 o'clock that night and i did not feel like recording anything by the time we got there i was wiped out he was tired and we just wanted to get everything unhooked and make sure we didn't forget anything make sure everything was put up, put up right and all that and uh um they did he did take the truck to a ford dealership they did tell him he is going to need an engine thing about that is nowadays everything on national back order i mean who knows how long he'll be down and out of work so he set up a gofundme page just for if anyone wants to help and the link is in that gofundme page and he actually uh wrote something out there to kind of explain the situation a little bit better but if you want to click over there and look at that he would appreciate it i would appreciate it um the tow bar he gave over a thousand dollars for the tow bar to get home i mean that's uh by the time you look at paying a record bill you know that that was a lot cheap a lot cheaper route to go and when we got to his house he told me to keep the rec the tow bar for hauling him home you know and i didn't want to do that i felt like he needed to keep it sell it return it do something with it and he wouldn't take no for an answer i put it in my truck the next week my truck's got to be towed in by the transport bandits i haven't got around to making that video yet but uh, my truck did go down on the next trip and now it looks like there's a possibility i may need an engine and i know there's a lot of people want to know why i haven't made a video about tearing the engine down i have got quite a few irons in the fire right now and i just I, it's not something i I'm, I'm gonna have time to do in the next next little while but it is gonna happen it's just not gonna happen in the next little while anyway um like i say i think david would go out of his way for any one of us i know there's a lot of people who watch these videos that know who he is from facebook and from the comments and stuff like that if you want to swing over and check out that gofundme uh, i know he would appreciate it and i would too um the tow bar i like the tow bar i mean when we pulled my truck back we kind of rigged it up because i didn't have any brackets on the front of my truck all i had was the tow hooks and that'll be in my video how we um, before we told my home how, we, how i rigged that up i do not recommend anybody doing what i did to get my truck home but the transport bandits felt safe with it and i felt safe with it and that's what we did so if you want to check that out that video will be coming out soon um but as far as the bar itself yeah if it would have been on my truck correctly if i would had the correct brackets it would have been great um i know a lot of people do talk about how, getting one to tow someone back you know like husbands and wives run out so they can deliver two loads and then drive one truck back and i, I wouldn't see a problem with that i mean it, it it did a really good job 
and it seemed very strong it seemed to do everything it was advertised to do but i do know that if you're going to get it shop around you can find them over here for 13 1400 and you find them over there for seven eight hundred you know and you can buy them used for a whole lot cheaper but the link to that one is in the description along with the uh, adapters that we use to go over that one inch piece of steel that his d-rings were on um i know this video was kind of all over the place but my main concern was making sure that we got the truck with that being my first time we pulled, pulled anything on tow bar making sure we had the truck hooked up securely and then we get riding down the road and i think oh heck i should have recorded that like when i pulled the drive shaft out but uh anyway thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate each and every one of you um, i hope i answered any questions if not leave them in the comments i have been having a heck of a time getting to the comments here recently but i, I will do the best i can to answer any of the comments that come in as i can thanks for watching i will see you in the next video um He's a really good guy. I met him through YouTube. He was watching the videos, and we got chit-chatting back and forth on the phone. And he's just—he's just, he's just a, a really good guy. Y'all wish him a lot of luck getting his truck back on the road. Thank you.